Hello my loves, today we're going to be talking about Encanto through a systemic perspective where we're going to be looking at it through the lenses of the family constellations and the generational experiences and all of the things that are sometimes unsaid within our family trees. Each and every single one of us occupies a role within our family systems. Often we occupy several of the roles or they mix with each other at different times and depending on what we're going through. But here we're going to see them quite clearly with the characters of Encanto. This is of course my view on it and I would love to hear what's your view on it. So first let's start where it all began. The um, family Madrigal they had to be displaced by war. War has been something that's been present in my beautiful country and we had like a quite intense conflict for many, many, many years. So this is picturing very clearly what so many people here had to go through. So they had to leave their land, leave everything behind. So this already causes like a strong disconnection from their place of origin. It generates a traumatic experience in them. And as we see them going, then the first, well, the second, because the first one is this displacement, but the second like massive major event is when Abuelo Pedro says goodbye to his family and he is murdered. This is super, super clear key point in what will happen later on in his family because he had a tragic death while he was very young. And when this happens, this has strong implications in the family system. Also, there are connections with the um, killers and how the family deals with this. But this will be for another video because I just want to like focus on the characters today. And there's like so much stuff in this movie. I love it and it's so rich that it will give us for like 20 more videos just talking about Encanto and all of these like different sides of it, okay? So when Abuelo Pedro's life is like cut short, then the abuela goes on with her life. Then we have abuela who doesn't seem to have a name. I've read like it's abuela alma. Alma means soul, right? So abuela represents the ancestors. She's the wise one within the family. She represents all of those men and women that came before us that have all of the wisdom, all of the knowledge. They are the ones that bring the family mandates. They are the ones that decide how things are done, right? They are the ones that, whether they're present or not, are influencing in our family's collective subconscious mind, yeah? So it's really fascinating to see her just like representing completely how things have been done, things this happen, and that's how we do it because we are the Familia Madrigal and this is how it's done here, right? So as you listen to the characters, just pay attention not only with your ears, but also with your heart to see which of these roles do you represent the most with, right? Then let's go to the like first generation after Abuela. So we have Julieta. Julieta is the healer. You can see her very clearly. She's the one that is like patching on everything. She's healing every situation and yeah she does it with her food but it's also with her way of speaking with her whole body attitude with how she like comforts the other so she's the healer there's the healers in the families are all the ones that are like constantly like trying to alleviate the pain right then we have tia pepa pepa represents in my opinion the fear She's so scared of everything. You see her like practically shaking throughout the movie and carrying on this uh, cloud that when she will lose control, then boom, it all comes falling down. She's so scared of what Abuela will say. She's so scared of ruining things for others. She's like the, like the present, the beating fear in the family, right? Um, and then we have Bruno. Bruno, such a fantastic character. He is the excluded one. He is the original black sheep. Um, he sees the future. He knows that 
you can do things differently but then since he's quite different from the family they're like no it's not how we do it around here like you are like generating a lot of discomfort right now like shut up don't speak yeah like censoring him and he's like i love my family so much but i'm just gonna exclude myself and not generate any more pain to them so i'd rather just go when they are excluded in our families and i'm sure that there's excluded members of all of our families that generates a lot of issues within the family system because everyone wants to belong everyone wants to be a part of and the true way to heal is when every single person in our, in, in our family system has a role. So Bruno is like, I find him fascinating. Also his loyalty with his father of, my God, dad, like your life was cut short and you couldn't be happy. So my life also ends when I'm quite young, right? And even though he's not killed, he practically is like dead to everyone. And he never left, poor baby. Like he was stuck in the walls, you know, because those we love, those we are excluding from our system, they never leave. They're in reality always there waiting for the cracks to open up and for them to be included, right? And then let's go to the other generation of the grandchildren. So we have a Camilo, right? Camilo is the, the camaleon, chameleon, the one that is changing depending on who he's with. He doesn't have quite a strong sense. He doesn't know what his identity is. And he just adapts depending on who's there. He's the little clown. He's the one like, oh my God, Abuela has gone through so much pain. So let's just make her happy. Let's just like make the little joke and let's just be really, really funny so that the pain goes away and she can focus on something like that. Are you the clown in your family? Or who is the person that's making the jokes who's the loudest one that's often because they have this lack of connection to themselves because they feel that their whole role or purpose is to make everyone else happy right we then have the beautiful dolores which for me represents the secrets in the family system my poor dolores like her name in spanish mean pain, means pain right so it's the pain when there's secrets there's pain like they're connected they go through it and she's all the time like shh, shh, shh. secrets cannot be like revealed but when there's secrets you cannot be happy with the person that you love you cannot create a family of your own you cannot really thrive because they're so heavy and they take up so much energy and space that there's no room for anything else right and then we have Antonio, Toñito, he's my favorite, maybe because I connect with little parts of his role and the love of the animals as well. For me, Toñito is the savior. He's this like beacon of light that all of the family is just putting all of their projections, all of their expectations, like you have to save us, you have to save the miracle, you have to save El Encanto, like when you save this, when you get your gift, and then it's like, it's a lot. He's just a little kid, right? But he's like, okay, I'll save you all. I'll do that for all of you. And then he wants to save his cousin. Like when he tells it, like, oh my God, like he doesn't want to leave her alone. Like poor Mirabeth, she doesn't have a, a gift. I'm staying with her here underneath the bed. Or I include her when I'm about to go and get my gift. So I call her so she comes with me and she feels... A, that she has a part and he also appears and is the one who wants to a, um, offer his room for Bruno to see into the future. He's like, it's fine, you can all use my room. So Tonito is the savior, right? Um, we then have Felix, Felix, a, he's Pepa's husband. He's the joy, the happiness, the lightness. He's dancing, he makes a will dance. All of his comments are like in a very positive uh, way. He's pushing away the Apepas' clouds. Like he is the, the happiness of the family. Agustin, who is a uh, Julieta's, um, Julieta's husband, is for me who embodies the body, the physical body, the poor guy, like he gets the massive nose or the ears or the hands. Like he's expressing the discomfort that is going and running deep within the family that no one else is expressing physically, but like you can see it, right? So he's just like 
showing us like there's something that's not right here and he embodies that like the, the body and he's like oh my god when Theo Felix and I joined the family we felt so bad because we didn't have a gift and we felt like not special at all or less than extraordinary or something like that so he's showing us that and then we have Luisa Luisa is the strength she's always caring more than she can carry she feels that she has no purpose if she's not being a util like useful she cannot rest she doesn't have time for herself she's always like helping others helping others helping others and caring 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 and holding everything um, and controlling so things don't collapse right and then we have Isabella, Isa, who is so creative and so eccentric, but she has been washed down. She's the golden girl. So she has played this part of, oh, I'm so good. Okay, you want me to marry that guy? I'm not into him, but okay, that will make the family happy. I'll do that. You want me to put roses and beauty all over? Okay, I'll do that. So it's like really shocking when she's expressing all of these things and she makes that beautiful cactus right or cacti i don't know how you say it in english and she's like oh my god this is different this is not perfect but it's so beautiful and you can see her true excitement and her true colors when she's just like oh my god i'm done with being little miss perfect right and then we have the wonderful mirabel that when i said i was gonna do this video i received so many comments like she looks like you maybe because of the curly hair and the glasses i don't know what do you all think and she, for me, is the one that's doing the reparations, right? In Spanish, I call her la reparadora. I don't know what the word is in English, but it's like the one that's doing the repairing, right? Like she is doing the repairments because she, oh my God, where do we start with Mirabel? She is the one that is also the black sheep, being loyal to her uncle, being like, oh my God, you've been excluded. I don't have to even remember you, right? But my soul knows that you tried to do things differently and it couldn't be done. So I'll do it for you, uncle. I love you. I'll take as mine this gift, a self-imposed gift of liberating everybody. She's the one that's breaking with the family like chains, like she's breaking all of them, that those traditions that are obsolete, those ways of, oh my God, you're only valuable because of your gifts. And she's bringing in like, hey, we are all worth it. Even if we don't have like a gift that is very shiny and you can clearly see it. She's the one that wants to include everybody. She's the one who helps her sisters, everybody to realize that they are valuable, that they are worth it. And she's the one that, makes sure bruno knows like man when i save this like the miracle when i bring it like you are coming back home like she makes sure that everybody in the family has a place and oh my god one of the scenes that like really made my heart like swell was when she looks where like through a little crack where bruno is staying and she sees that the family like dining table is there and then she sees that Bruno has his own little seat where he eats and he's like, man, I love my family, uh, but I knew that I had to leave to save them. And she's like, you belong, right? And then how everything gets repaired and healed when Mirabel goes back to the origin. Remember that first scene where Abuelo Pedro is killed? So she's crying there and then the abuela goes and she's like, oh my God, there was so much pain that I could never come back here. And then she goes back to the origin. This is why it's important that we go back to the origin where things happen, where everything initiated, because that's the biggest clue to the puzzle, right? And then she's like, oh my God, there was so much pain. And then it all gets like included, seen, and you see Mirabel telling the grandmother, like, oh my, I see you, I see your pain, I say yes to all of your story, I know it was not easy for you. So it's just acknowledging everything that our ancestors have been through and how they all have a part, how, all they, how they all belong, right? And then all of the village comes together and contributes into making La Casita what it was. A, and it's so beautiful because it reminds us that every single one of us has a very clear role even if it's not like a main character one or something that's very clear we all can add like a little brick on the wall right 
So it's very beautiful. I hope this helped you and made you reflect a little bit about your own family. What was the character that you identified yourself with? The most and why for me it's very clear that i could see myself in toñito and in mirabel right like i'm the one who's like trying to open up and bring to the surface all of my family systems and a, a, a secrets and i want to save everybody and, and this kind of thing so when you really realize things and you like put a light into it it all changes and it's so freeing that when mirabel decided to like break the mold and do things in alignment with what she felt was right for her, it all changed. So now you know that from now on, we do talk about Bruno.